I think we have to see beyond the, 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 the stories. This song is beautiful. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to it. I'll talk about it as deeply as I possibly can because I think it's beautiful that he says something about like going beyond the reaches of your love. The, go beyond the reaches of your love. How far can he reach? Can you? This is like a song that he's asking permission to be shown how far his love reaches. And not just like we think of far as far as distance, right? So like from here, I go if I travel from here to say Washington D.C. because I traveled there recently. If I travel from here, that's that's covering space, that's covering distance, that's covering space and time, right? But what's beyond that? What's beyond like like the reaches of his love? Can he can he reach down deeper? Can he can he go? Can he extend his hand and reach beyond your sin? What's on the other side? That thing that you said we strayed away from. Can you reach beyond that and pull some, pull uproot the thing that makes you sin? I don't know if I'm talking. Some people might call it new age. I, I hate that term, but but there's. I'm asking questions here. I'm not making any assertions. I just want to know. Like, can he reach beyond behind the thing that that causes you to sin? Can you reach behind behind that and then pull it from its root? So that you never touch those thoughts again, those feelings again. So that your mind will never desire those things again. So that your heart doesn't desire things from experiences in this earth again. Can you reach so far back in there and, and uproot and unplug things so that you can live fully to your full potential? To who you were meant to be. What's the name of the song you're talking about? It's called Crazy Love by Chris McClarney. Please listen to that song and please listen to it with headphones. And please try to get in, try to sit in the middle of that song. Like literally, if you can, I mean, it takes some imagination, but if you if you do it right, you sit like in the middle of a room, imagine the drummer on, on behind you, imagine the bass player on this side, the guitar player, however you hear it, because producers do a great job at making sure that that the sound is spatial. So if you can sit in the middle of that song and let that song hit you and carry you off and pay attention to the lyrics and listen to it over and over again and pay attention to what he's saying, he's saying, he's giving, he's giving you his experience of, of what it's like to be in a relationship with, with God. You might not agree with it, just like we don't agree with, with um, Corey's version of reckless love, right? Some people don't agree with that, but that's his personal way of, of experiencing God to him. His love is reckless. Like, man, like I was in a reckless situation. I was, I was unsavable. If that's a word. I don't think that's a word. But I was unsavable. And yet he went through so many obstacles because I don't even, like, I thought it was crazy for me to go back to safety. And he went through all of that just to pull me out and put me over his shoulders and walked out with me. And so if Corey wants to see it as reckless, let him see it as reckless. Right? It's not, it's not offending anybody. God is bigger than that. Than, than any word you can throw at him to offend him. It's like throwing pebbles at a at a mountain. There's nothing. No, in fact, it's like rolling a piece of paper, like a straw, like you know, like the, the little cover where the straw comes in, and you crumble it and you throw it at a mountain and you think you're gonna destroy it. Come on, God's bigger than that.